Greetings everyone and welcome back to the bench. While I'm on this op amp kick here, I thought I'd look at another aspect of their performance. But before I get into that, a couple things I wanted to talk about real quick. Some upcoming videos. A few things I can think of is the JAT501 audio amplifier project. Yeah, I still intend to have boards made for that and I have a couple videos coming out on that project. I know some people have already designed boards, even made their own amplifiers. And I've been thinking of a collaboration because I just haven't had the time to get into learning a uh, PC board layout type software. There's been quite a bit of things going on this year in my life. So, yeah, I haven't really been able to put too much effort towards that. Another amplifier project I want to look at again is the JAT Easy Amp. I had the uh, transistors pop on this during testing due to uh, cross conduction. And I want to fix this and uh, get back into it. See what I can do with that. Also have a uh, at least two chip amp done right type videos I want to do. I have an LED bulb to tear down from my parents' house. Another one burned out. So we'll tear it down and see what failed inside of that. Uh, acrylic boxes, how to make one. I know I mentioned that a while ago. I still need to make a video on that. So yeah, I have a whole bunch of projects I want to do and videos to make. So stay tuned for that. Also a big thanks to my Patreon supporters. If you'd like to support the channel, there's a link down in the description. So what I'm going to take a look at today is the output voltage swing of the amplifier and how it reacts to different loads. So what is the output swing? Well, I drew this little graph here. This dotted line represents the positive supply voltage of 15 volts and this one is the negative 15 volt supply rail. I drew the sine wave in here. And the sine wave can go up to a certain amount, to a certain peak, before it clips. And that's the maximum output voltage peak before clipping. So why is this important? Well, it depends on the use of the amplifier. If you put too much load on the amplifier, it will hinder this output swing capability. Your typical op amp is only designed to handle a few tens of milliamps of current and many of them have current limit built in so if you exceed that it really hinders the output it'll uh, reduce this significantly now you'll notice that the output cannot swing all the way to the rail and the reason for that is well take a look at this very simplified output stage so let's say the sine wave is swinging up to near the peak here and we have a load connected to the output. So the positive side of the output uh, stage is conducting current and going out into the load and back to ground. So there will be some voltage drop across the collector emitter junction of the transistor and also across the emitter resistor. Now for certain types of circuits they make what's called a rail-to-rail -rail op amp where it's designed and optimized to swing as close to the rail as possible not really necessary for audio type circuits but just so you know that they're available so here's the circuit I'm going to use it's just an amplifier setup with a gain of 11 input signal goes here and on the output I have several resistors and a way to select between them so the first selection here is open so there's no load the next selection is 10k then 1K, 470, and 100 ohms. And since most of these amplifiers are meant for limited current, you'll see what happens as we put more and more load on the output of this amplifier. In other words, lower and lower resistance value here. And we'll see how that affects the output swing. Of course, I'll connect the scope up to the output here and we'll monitor the waveform. Here are the chips I'm going to use, same as in the last video, but I found this, this 4556, so we'll take a look at its performance. 
because this is you know kind of long and tedious to measure I'll just measure two on camera go back and do the rest and come back with the results okay so here's the circuit the op amp plugged in these here are just sitting off to the side waiting to be tested those are my load resistors and I can just move this wire to select the one I want to test or leave it out for no load my signal source for the one kilohertz sine wave will be the music player going into the op amp I'm really only using this because it has the level control so I can adjust the signal level going into the op amp since I'm not concerned with square waves that might have high frequency components like ringing and you know the fast rising and falling edges I can use the scope lead in 1x probe and I've got the probe cap on the ground lead clipped up so we're ready to go let's do this okay the first op amp under test will be the NE5532 you can see the signal going there, have the power supply turned on, serial mode, plus and minus 15 volts. Let's get on the scope here. Let's see if there's less glare with that off. So I'll adjust the signal up, and there is clipping. Nice clipping. It might start on the bottom just a little bit earlier. But you can see, if I look at the peak-to-peak -peak voltage here, I have that set up. Now, if it was rail-to-rail, -rail, it would be 30 volts. But right now, it is 28.4 volts. See, that should not change much as I adjust that. So I'll have to look at just at clipping here. So let me disconnect that. Whoa. Okay, this is without any load. I had it on the 10K resistor, so looks like 28.8 volts with no load. Okay, so again with the 10K, plug that in there. And I'm having problems with this probe lead here. It won't stay clamped on the wire. It dropped to 28.4. Moving to the 1K resistor, it dropped to 28.0 volts peak to peak. Now with the 470 ohm resistor, we dropped to 27.2. Going to 100, it really collapsed and dropped to 10.8 volts peak to peak. And I'm sure that current limiting is probably responsible for some of that. The next op amp we'll look at here is the 4556. Most of these op amps will handle somewhere between 25, maybe up to 40 milliamps. But the 4556 is designed to have a maximum output current of 70 milliamps. So we'll see how that compares with the NE5532. Okay, so now we're set with no load. So I'll turn it up into clipping so I can see what the maximum peak-to-peak -peak signal will be. And it is jumping around, but we'll say 28.4. So it's actually slightly less than the NE5532. But again, that is with no load. So now we'll try 10K and see what happens there didn't really change at all it's the same as the NE5532 with the 10k resistor load with the 1k it's 28.2 whereas the 5532 was 28.0 so really not a big difference 470 ohm is 27.8 versus 27.2 so you can start seeing a difference here now this is where the big difference is occurring. With the 100 ohm load, we're now at 22.6, where the 5532 collapsed down to only 10.8 volts peak to peak. 
So you can see how the 4556 is able to deliver more current into that load. Okay, so I'll go back through the other op amps and test them out and come back with the results. And here are the results. And I must say, pretty interesting results as well. First of all, let's take a look at the TL072. And look what happens with a 1K load. See how the output voltage collapse? We're down to 20.8 volts peak to peak, while the other chips are doing far better. Pretty disappointing as these chips are designed for driving line type level loads. And I would consider a 1K ohm load you know, probably on the low end of that. So yeah, the output swing of this chip really collapses under load. Just not really been impressed with that chip. I built an amplifier with it once and there was a lot of hiss. It wasn't my circuit because when I replaced it with a different chip, the amp was much quieter. And if you remember the step response test, it was pretty much in the last place there as well. Well, speed and output swing may not be a criteria for your circuit. Plus, this chip will be forgiving in a circuit with bad layout. You know, it is slower with limited current, so it's probably going to be more stable and forgiving for a bad layout. However, yeah, I just never was impressed with that chip. Next here is the LM833. It suffered a little bit at 1K. The 5532 is doing much better. So I was kind of surprised to see that. I thought this would be a successor. And it might be with some of its performance specs, but its output swing wasn't nearly as good as the 5532. And then the LM4562, of course, very impressive figures. It even had higher output swing than the 4556 even though it's designed to have a much higher output current. It wasn't much, but in a couple places it was slightly higher. Now you do see at 100 ohms, it did drop, but that's just the current limit kicking in and protecting its output. And then there's the 4556. Of course, being a chip that delivers higher output current than the other ones, it had very good numbers as well. Especially with the 100 ohm load, you can see it did much better than the other chips. These numbers here are the peak output current measured with the 100 ohm load. What this is showing is the output current limit. I believe all the chips are in current limit mode with the 100 ohm load. That's the reason for testing it there. So at least under this condition, you can see what their maximum output current is and probably limited by the current limit circuit. So you can see that the 4556 is able to deliver a lot more current than the other chips. Okay, so now I'll pick two winners off this list and you can probably guess what those are. First, the LM4562 with its stellar audio performance numbers. Plus, the output swing numbers are also very good as it can handle pretty much any load impedance with line type level circuits that you would throw at it. And next would be the 4556 with its ability to deliver higher output current, although it doesn't have the really impressive audio performance numbers like the 4562. And as a runner up, I would pick the 5532. It has decent audio performance figures and also pretty good output swing for delivering a signal into line level type applications. So there you have it, op amp output swing performance test. That'll do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Well, here's the Snickers. Been sleeping all afternoon.